Good morning, folks. Everything new under the sun. Looking today uh, at the images from yesterday, Notre Dame on fire, roof collapsed. It's an interesting day. Now, I've never been to Notre Dame, um, but it's certainly a sad thing to see. Such a piece of history. One thing we should be reminded as Christians is that this world is not our home. We should not be holding on to things of the past. And often we do that as Christians. We hold on to things of the past. The people, all people, Christian or not. We hold on to things that we think are uh, old, that are relevant. We don't recognize that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our life is a breath. And we are gone. And this is one of those reminders. And it also, I think... Uh, you could say that it's a good metaphor for religion in this world. Um, the world is on fire with religion. The world is on fire with the old traditions, with the old things that are happening. The world is not on fire with Jesus Christ, with Christianity, with a with a relational, um, with a, a relationship with uh, Jesus Christ. Um, the world is in love with uh, history and religion. And historical things um, and, and yes th this is uh, quite sad to see um, a bit of history gone and I, I even feel sad even though I've never actually been to Notre Dame it's just one of those one of those things that makes you think you know what we aren't gonna be here forever these things will all be wiped out when the Lord cleanses the earth with fire and he will cleanse it and I think that cleansing fire is closer than we all think and that's going to wipe out all of these things Notre Dame it's going to wipe out um, the Eiffel Tower it's going to wipe out every building of antiquity every old building every new building it's going to wipe the slate clean for humanity and then there will be a millennial reign with Christ in a rebuilt earth with peace and security and we'll have a chance then uh, the the, the un uh, on the unbelievers uh, will have a chance to recognize Jesus Christ as, your, as their Savior as they live for a thousand years in peace and security with Christ ruling and reigning, with the saints um, governing um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, judging over the, over the world and the millennial reign of Christ. This is an image of the scaffolding. So you see the blue area there, that's where the scaffolding was. And what it looks like is some construction triggered um, the flame, triggered a spark, uh, which caused the, uh, which caused the uh, fire to start. Likely someone was grinding metal or something, um, uh, or two pieces of metal, you know, um, hit each other and, and caused a spark. Any little thing, I mean, the timber in this roof would be um, so dry. Um, any little thing would cause it to uh, burn, basically. Um, you know, and I wouldn't want to be the company, to say the least, um, that was in charge of this. No amount of, sure, of insurance, of course, uh, would be able to cover this. I mean, it's you, you'll never get this back. <clears throat> Even though they're promising to rebuild, they've uh, dedicated $300 million to rebuild this, uh, this cathedral. It's never going to be the same way. It's going to be interesting to see what they do for the spire. Is it going to be similar medieval type uh, building of the spire? Uh, or are they going to upgrade it? It's something that can never be rebuilt. And, and we look at it as regular humans and say, that's sad, a part of our history is lost. But again, the Lord will wipe all these things out um, in the wrath of God when he cleanses the earth with fire. Let's take a look at, uh, here's, a, here's a look at uh, uh, before as the, uh, the roof of part of the cathedral was on fire. You can see the fire uh, flaming through it. And then as we uh, scroll to the left, you can see that roof absolutely collapses in. They've uh, apparently saved the main construction of it, the uh, the actual brickwork. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna attempt to rebuild this, but you can see the scaffolding on the top there, right over, and that's exactly where the fire started. So something the construction crew did um, triggered this. Something to think about. Um, it, it's certainly sad to see, but on the other hand, as a Christian, you got to look at the. Um, the bigger picture, and know that you know God is going to wipe all these things out, um, and we're not we're not going to have these uh, in the millennial reign of Christ. 
these are going to be gone, and there's going to be um, uh, a kingship. He is he is going to be um, the ruler, and he will reign, and we will reign with Christ during the millennial reign of Christ um, during that thousand year period, and that uh, is coming soon. And the, the wiping out of of the <clears throat> of the planet with fire, the cleansing of the planet is coming soon. If I were to put a timeline on it, I think we're probably about six years away from the wrath of God starting, which occurs in the middle of the seven-year tribulation. And uh, the uh, the consummation uh, of um, the tribulation and the wrath um, being about the year 2028, and then the start of the millennial reign of Christ, um, and of course before the millennial reign, all these things are going to be wiped out. So, um, it, it, it's it's a sad thing to see. It's uh, history um, that we've lost. But again, ultimately, this is going to be wiped out regardless uh, in the next six years, um, I believe, uh, when God cleanses the earth with fire and gets rid of all these religions, gets rid of all these um, things that we the, we end up worshiping um, in, this, in this world. And this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Let's take a look at a couple of articles here. Proud Canadians protest perverted new coins celebrating decriminalization of homosexual acts. So the Royal Mint apparently is coming out with a, a, a coin which commemorates the, the day uh, where they uh, um, uh, um, legalized homosexual, or, or they uh, decriminalized, rather, um, homosexual sex acts. And so that's kind of a sad day in terms of um, allowing and uh, decriminalizing um, uh, what is a, a sinful act. Should governments be involved in criminalizing this? I think there is a place uh, for recognition of sin and um, and punishment. There certainly was in the Old Testament, and that's a whole conversation to get into. But... Um, whether or not um, there is uh, uh, punishment in this world for sin or uh, in the next, the afterlife, if you will, <clears throat> um, God will judge it regardless. God will judge lies. God will judge theft. God will, God will judge all the um, small sins and big sins in our eyes on this world, uh, in this world. He will judge that when he comes back to judge the Earth, uh, which is not that far off, that's going to be uh, that's going to be soon, I think. And um, so, the the issue here is not the decriminalization, but I think um, the worshiping, the celebrating uh, of sin. And ultimately, I think that's what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. You had a celebration, you had a complete perversity, and not just uh, you know talking about homosexuality; it's about all sin. When we start celebrating any sin, when we start holding sin up as something that uh, we should be doing, that's good and and uh, and, and natural, um, that's when I think God starts saying, you know what, your your time is up. When you're celebrating what I've said is wrong, that's the time uh, when destruction comes. And so, you know, good on these people for um, protesting against this. We should not be celebrating it. Uh, whether or not they legalize or decriminalize, rather, homosexuality is not the not the story, not the issue. The issue is when we celebrate sin. Um, that's I think when God says their hearts are continually evil. Um, they're completely given over to sinful practices. You know, regardless of homosexuality, any sin. Uh, when uh, our minds are completely perverted and uh, we we decide that you know everything we do is fine, right is wrong, and wrong is right. That's when God finally says, all right, there's no hope anymore, um, <clears throat> no amount of punishment um, or you know, supernatural wrath is going to change their minds. They've been given over completely to sin. And God allows that. Um, it, it says in the scriptures that God gives them over to their sinfulness. They, they decided to sin. They, just, they decided to embrace it. And God gives them over to whatever the sin in their mind is. And, uh, and basically, their minds are cemented, their minds are hardened in that fashion. And uh, I think the idea 
to me is that um, God lets them choose what they want to choose <clears throat> and God lets their minds be cemented into that way of thinking so that when judgment comes, um, he can say, you know what, you were not on the fence, you were not um, uh, you know, you were not choosing right. You were absolutely choosing wrong. There was no gray area here. Uh, and so your judgment is uh, righteous and confirmed and valid. And no one is going to be able to argue at that point. Um, God doesn't like the lukewarm. He likes the hot. Uh, he prefers hot or cold. At least God knows where you stand if you're hot or cold. But if you're lukewarm waffling in the middle, um, he, he spews you out of his mouth. And, and so I think um, the celebration of sin is where he draws the line because that means uh, at that point um, you're given over to uh, whatever sin it is <clears throat> that uh, is the issue. Israel. <clears throat> Israel will be blessed in the last days. And then in the last minutes of the last days, there comes a time of, of famine and economic collapse. And I think that's spoken of in, in Isaiah 17, which I did yesterday. But right now, they are blessed as a nation. Significant natural gas discovery made off Israel's shore, further cementing it as an energy power. Newly found gas will be added to the previously discovered gas fields, increasing Israel's energy dependence. So they're, uh, they're finding natural gas and, and fuel Hand over foot. I mean, this is incredible. Um, the other uh, Arab nations are going to be absolutely jealous of this. According to preliminary estimates, the latest discovery in the Karish North Exploration Field contains 28 to 42 billion cubic meters of natural gas. So huge deposits, and Israel stands to gain from this. They were, they are a energy superpower with all these uh, natural gas and gas fields. Uh, being found um, off their shores, so they are absolutely an energy superpower, and they will be blessed. They will there will be abundance there in the last days. There will be hooks that turn Gog Magog around in the last days and bring them down for a spoil. The Bible says it's to take riches, it's to take something away from um, uh, Israel that all the other nations want, and uh, and all the other nations want wealth, they want oil, as they are running out of, as the Arab nations are running out of oil, and peak oil uh, has occurred, um, they will be going after Israel, as Israel is the only country in the world that continues to find uh, massive oil and gas deposits, and that's prophetic, that triggers, that ends up being one of the hooks in the jaw of Gog Magog, Ezekiel 38. When you speak about wars, Rumors of wars. There's talk of an attack on Iran. There's a buildup of tanks in uh, Kuwait. And there's rumors of, you know, will Trump uh, reveal the peace plan or will he strike Iran first? And so there's rumors of the strike on Iran with, the, like I say, the tank buildup in Kuwait. Now we have American F-35s um, in the region being deployed. The F-35s deployed to the Middle East. Um, and this is deployed to the UAE's Al Dafra Air Base, and it marks the first operational deployment of the stealth jet. So, as rumors float around um, that uh, Iran, uh, that the U.S. is planning a an attack on Iran with Israel, <clears throat> you have now the revealing that F-35 fighter jets are now in the area. United States Air Force has sent several F-35 fighter jets to the Middle East, marking the first operational deployment of American stealth fighters to the region. Not only that, but you had the, remember what I spoke about yesterday, uh, the military aerial umbrella that the U.S. is um, uh, um, uh, has for Israel over Syria, over Lebanon, and they've made uh, Russia uh, aware that uh, the U.S. is providing aerial protection for uh, Israeli flights over um, Syria, Lebanon, to strike uh, Iranian targets in Syria. So this is a big advancement because we know the F uh, S-300, S-400 are there, and the F-35 is maybe the only uh, fighter um, that can... Uh, um, that can fly over the skies of Syria against Russia. And now Russia is going to be upset about this. This is going to be harder for them to target. According to the USAF, 
unspecified number of F-35S's light uh, S-35S AS rather Lightning twos landed at uh, Al Dafra Air Base in the United Arab Emirates. So there seems to be a buildup in the Middle East <clears throat> of tanks of fighters, and this leads to the um, the speculation that there is a strike on Iran uh, possible and maybe soon. And one opinion piece on jpost.com um, was just that. Does Trump um, strike Iran first with Israel or do they reveal the peace process? And so that's an interesting uh, a bit of uh, speculation that is coming out right now. So wars, rumors of wars, Israel being blessed in the last days. I think the metaphor of Notre Dame burning, religions are burning, religions are falling down, the world is on fire, religion is on fire. Um, the only thing we have is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that matters in these last days. And there will come uh, a false prophet and an antichrist figure which promote a one world religion. As the religions of the world are burning down, they're going to promote a one world religion where we all come together and all put down our, you know, whatever our particular specific um, tenets of faith are. And we come together in peace and security in the last days, um, along with the world government, along with the one world uh, monetary system, the Mark of the Beast system, where all all lines of uh, history and, uh, and prophecy are converging. We are in the last days. I think we have probably less than two years to go now before the seven-year tribulation and some massive prophetic wars, I think, to happen even before the kickoff of the seven-year tribulation. I think things are going to get a lot worse before the world starts calling for and giving a mandate for a one world government and, and gives a mandate to a, a one world leader and a mark of the beast system. The world has to get really bad economically, politically, and in terms of wars and rumors of wars before the world will be calling for and giving a mandate to um, leaders to uh, put forth a one world government. And I say that over and over because I, I can't understate that, or I can't overstate that enough, rather. Um, I think that uh, the time is short. I think we're going to see some massive wars, some massive economic upheaval. And when the economic upheaval starts, I think that is the trigger for uh, the significant escalation in the Middle East. It, it allows the other countries, as countries are desperate uh, you know, for food, for water, as they're desperate for whatever wealth they can get when the economy collapses, I think that's when the prophetic wars start happening. I really think that uh, economic trouble, significant worldwide economic collapse and trouble is the big trigger event. And there's going to be another famine in Revelation 6 in, in some of um, the, the wrath that comes upon the, the seals and the judgments, um, the bowls um, that uh, are, are uh, dumped upon the earth. I think there's famine in those times as well. But I think uh, one trigger point uh, is an economic collapse, which uh, leads to the one world government, leads to the economic situation uh, and the mark of the beast situation. And then there's uh, a, a short respite, a short time of um, correction as the world gets back to maybe a bit, little bit of normal. And then, and then we see peace in the Middle East and the whole world celebrates. And, um, and then there's apparently three and a half years of um, supposed peace as the world rebuilds and then the wrath of God. And that's when stuff really um, uh, falls apart. So we are in the last days, guys. Thanks for watching. I leave it there. Something to think about as we ponder the state of world religion as Notre Dame has burned down. And it, makes, it gives you pause to think, you know, where is your faith? Is your faith and your, uh, is your life uh, dependent on things of this world? Are you worshipping things of this world? Or are you looking to heaven? Are you looking to eternity and recognizing that this place is not our home? We're just passing through. We need to know Jesus Christ. He has plans which are incredibly exciting and going to be uh, fun uh, for us, the millennial reign of Christ and eternity after that. We have no idea what's coming and we should not put our... our our hope and trust in this world um, as uh, we don't know if you have tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave it there, and we'll see you guys in the next video.